I hope, really, that uh, you go to church. I hope, really, you don't go to my church. <laughs> small churches. <laughs> Please, go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that say, oh, come to my church. <laughs> Sorry. I'll tell you to go to church somewhere. Wherever you want to go, fine, go. But <laughs> yeah, don't expect me to invite you to where I'm going. <laughs> um, of course, now I'm probably going to get, you know, a reprimand from a pastor <laughs> or some some well-meaning person that goes to the same church I go to. <laughs> They're going to say, don't tell people that. <laughs> Why not? Use it like reverse psychology. Tell them don't come here. <laughs> Probably will work. I'll keep telling people, don't, please, go away. I like my church. Don't ruin it. <laughs> and I don't mean because of who you are. I mean because I don't want bunches of people. <laughs> You see, one of the things I find is that I like going to church because I kind of enjoy the intimacy and the fellowship. You know, I look around and there's some empty seats. Thank God! <laughs> some of you people, man, you need a shower. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but seriously, you know, I enjoy, quite frankly, less and fewer people. Like I've said before, less is more. But I really think you should go to church, you know, I mean, I've, I'm one of those people that grew up telling everyone, hey, you don't got to go, I don't care, quite frankly, go somewhere, but don't go, you know, if you don't want to go, because you know what it's like when you take someone along, you know, that we used to call the party pooper, they were a party pooper, something stunk, <laughs> and, you know, there was like blemishes on your feast, you know, like the scripture says, or like, you know, kind of like messed up, you know, and yeah, church is for people that are messed up, but if you don't want to be there, don't go. I mean, until you're ready, forget it, you know. Just get out of the way. Let people enjoy what they want to do today, which is to get together to help each other, to encourage each other, to pray for one another, to learn the Word of God, to spend time with God, to hear the Word of God, to be exhorted, to be taught, to transport themselves out of the physical realm into the spiritual realm of God's kingdom in the sense of the kingdom being here on earth and all about us so that we could see things that we would not have thought to see when we were just sitting at home looking at our computer to invent everything that we want to see. You see? But you don't want to be there. Don't go there. I mean, that's the truth. I, I personally hope you go. You know, I hope you go to church somewhere. I don't care where. Personally, I kind of, you know, like... When I'm when I when I want to be when I want to be alone in prayer, you know, and I just kind of want to like you know really think about God. There's nothing like a Catholic cathedral, you know, to sit in one. You know, you look up and you kind of, whenever you're not distracted in prayer, you know, you look around and you kind of feel like you want to pray. <laughs> Those basilicas, man, wow, awesome for prayer. I don't know about the worship part, you know, because I'm not much into organs or you know, pipes, you know, but. Uh, you know, everybody to their own. You know, I've stood and I know what a missile is, you know. Kind of like reminds me of a Catholic, you know. I mean, Catholic reminds me of a Jewish. Uh, uh, prayer book, I can't think of the name of it right now off the top of my head. Um, Siddur, you know, which just simply means order. You know, the way you should do things. But the point being is that, hey, the Catholics made up a missile the same way that the rabbis made up a Siddur. You know, it's just one of those things. It was made up. But whatever your tradition is, you know, if you like going, you know, to contemporary and you like big giant screens, you know, and television sets, you know, and you like to sit in a giant stadium with thousands of other people and worship your rock star, hey, go to church. <laughs> Quite frankly, some of you have that kind of church. Okay, yes, if that's what you like, hey, you know, you don't have to go to a rock concert, you know, you got it right there Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. Give up one addiction for another. <laughs> Did I say that? Oh well. But you know, I mean, every church has its own 
benefits, its own detriments, its own joys, its own capabilities, and its own inabilities. I personally hope you go to church, but just not the one I'm at. <laughs> I like where I'm at. Please, don't stumble the pastor or somebody or the ministry, you know, by making it bigger or better or whatever. You know, kind of like uh, I'm kind of content, you know, where I'm at. Now I'll admit, you know, there's more I'd like to do and there's more I'd like to see done. But yeah, yeah, you know, God does what He does. You know, I've been to so many different places that I enjoy wherever I go. But you should go, you know, really, and find the place you do enjoy then employ your gift of the Spirit that God has given you in order to minister to others. Because going to church isn't always about you getting. Sometimes it's about you giving. And I don't mean money. <laughs> God knows. You know, we are the biggest, most spoiled entity in the world, the church, when it comes to money. Because, quite frankly, you know, we spend more money in Christianity than the government does in the economy. <laughs> Sometimes, but you have to take it as an overall giant picture. You take it just individual, I'm sure your church is probably struggling for funds or, you know, dealing with something, you know, that they want more money for, you know. Another building project, you know, let's get bigger, better, more money, then we can do more. I've heard that before. <laughs> Thank God Jesus only used 12, you know. Imagine what would have happened if he used more. We'd all be saved. But going to church, for me, is just an expression of my devotion. That's all. Really. It's just an expression of my devotion. I don't get as much from church anymore as I used to. You know, I mean, I, I pretty much study on my own. You know, I get everything I need at home. You know, I have a Bible. I have a personal relationship with God. You know, I pray to Him daily. I talk to Him regularly. You know, I have... Uh, gift of the Holy Spirit that teaches me. I have the Holy Spirit who causes me to remember those things that the Father has taught me and that Jesus has spoken to me. So I have all that I need really for worship and for fellowship because I have neighbors and friends, you know, and I have video and, you know, I'm in the ministry and doing those things that God has told me to do. So really, in some ways, you could say I don't need church, but it's an expression of my devotion. And that's why I go to churches. I go to church as an expression of my devotion and an action of my love. It's my love for you that I go to church to see you and what you're learning. Because you see, I can sit in a church, even though I'm not, you know, in front of the people. <laughs> Thank God, you know, people couldn't handle me teaching. <laughs> They'd be there for a while. <laughs> and we might have a conversation going on, you and I. <laughs> we might talk about what's going on. Not just after the service, but during the service. Oops, speaking of what's going on, we had a blackout. That's what's going on here with the wind. So, adjusting my little wind block, we would have conversation in church if I was teaching because I'm more concerned about you dealing with what you're dealing with than I am about everyone else, the 99, you know, that's probably just fine, you know, and they just came and showed up, you know. <laughs> Gotta do our thing, you know, make sure the kids go to church. And that's really what it's about, is the more you realize church is for giving of that with which you have as an expression of your devotion to God, then you know it's not about money, and it's not about abilities, and it's not about your strengths or your weaknesses, but it's about sharing in the expression of devotion to God. Not just worship, but the expression of devotion. Because worship isn't the only expression of devotion. Worship is one aspect. Prayer is another. Uh, reading the Word is another. Encouraging each other in the Word. Speaking to one another in psalms and songs and spiritual songs. Making melody in your hearts that you might be able to exhort one another when you see someone that needs some help or needs some correction. Or maybe just needs a hug. Worship can be a hug. I mean worship. Uh, church can be just a hug. Maybe that's why you're supposed to go there. You're a hugger. <laughs> One big hugger. Personally, I like people that are big for hugs. I don't like these little tiny people that you, you, know, you wrap around and you got to go, Oh, well, excuse me, I need to hug you with the brother hug. Forget the brother hug. Forget the church hug. I want a guy that's a big bear of a guy and I can just go up and, Oh, brother, I'm You know, hug him. 
Quite frankly, I like women that way, too. I am just blessed, you sister. You know, I don't care who you are, whether you're tall, skinny, short, whatever. I don't know the brother hug. I don't know the sister hug. I just hug. <laughs> so the reality for me is just like, hey, don't come near me if you don't want to hug. And, you know, once you get to know me, then I'll hug you. I usually hug strangers after I've been at a church for a while. Right now, people don't know me. <laughs> I might intimidate them. They may go run screaming out of the church. Ah, get away from me! Ah, run! Hide. He's one of the those. You know, he's serious about his faith. You know, and they used to call him Pentecostals. And quite frankly, I'm not. I'm pretty conservative when it comes to kind of like outward expressions of an inward devotion. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not one of those that's remonstrative and demonstrative to run out there and start going, you know, the language, <laughs> and start doing it and showing it and being it and, you know, bringing all attention to myself. I don't think so. Bad enough that when I laugh, somehow everybody notices. Can't figure out why. Here I go and I just laugh. It's funny. And everybody notices. Oops. But you see, that's why it's fun for me to go to church. Because I'm not about myself. I'm not into an image or a reflection of who I am in my relationship with God. I'm more of an observation of who you are according to the moving of the Spirit of God in your life so that I can participate with you in that devotion and that expression of devotion to God of your life. And I like to see that. You know, I like to see other Christians going, yeah, man, that, that, that was cool. Remember when the pastor said, you know, or yeah, you know what? That was really an awesome word, man. I, you know what I got out of it? I got, you know, I went off on a tangent, but I got this out of it. I love to hear those things, you know. Well, not so much anymore, but, you know, it kind of perks my ear up. I listen, and I can hear all the way across the room, so be careful. <laughs> Oops. You know, I don't necessarily look right at you when I'm listening, but when I am with the pastor, yeah, because I'm trying to encourage him in the ministry, you know, like with the Spirit of God, you know, like he's ministering to me, and I'm ministering to him, and we're kind of like, you know, getting it from the Holy Spirit, so we're kind of like, you know... You know, we got a secret thing going, which is called the unity of the body of believers, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, that's what he meant. Well, yeah, you know, you kind of want to love one another, as Jesus said, to be loved and to love. Because after all, God already proved that he loves and that he loves the world. So when I go to church... My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more than number than the sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth! Thy love is better than wine. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. You are fairer than the children of men. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to his banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is more sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, this is my friend. So you see, I kind of go because I want to. I kind of go because I enjoy it. I don't go because I have to, because quite frankly, I don't. And you don't either. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do, and probably will. Especially today. Especially any day that you choose to go your way and not his way. But the expression of my devotion in sharing and caring enough to go to and be devoted to you know, a fellowship or a congregation or a body of people that get together and call themselves in the name of the Lord Jesus you know, and want to in some way formulate you know, this, this unity or this growing entity that we call the body of Christ, that we call the church. I enjoy that because you see, I have a variety of plants behind me, you know, I mean, maybe you can see some of them blooming, you know, that's kind of like you, you know, maybe you're blooming, <laughs> oh, you got your bloomers on, oh, sorry, made a mistake, 
But it's kind of like, you know, all these plants around me. You know, each one is different. And yet the sum total of them together makes a beautiful picture of what my garden is like. You know, the soil that I tilled and made sure that it was custom designed just for each one of the plants. And sometimes I've killed a few plants with the wrong soil. Happens. And the soil that I prepared, you know, and got the weeds out of, and that I water daily, and that I have to take care of when the sun's shining, or when the wind's blowing, or when it gets really cold or too hot. You realize that soil is church? You know, that you're planted in a church? That you're in the soil, you know, that you need to be taken care of? You need the water, and you need the sun, and you need to be, like, in your container? You know, that's what your church is? That's kind of what these plants are. When it's done right, as you can look around, Awesome, isn't it? Isn't it a great, wonderful sight to see when you watch and appreciate what God has done in creation and how he has made it to bloom? That's what the cause for going to and being a part of any church really is, is to watch and see what God will grow in that container. How will he develop it into what he wants it to be? You can't make you know, these plants become trees. Ain't gonna work, sorry. <laughs> you can stick them out in the wind where, you know, it'll make a mighty oak become a mighty oak, but it'll just kill the snot out of these trees or these little bushies, you know, because guess what? They aren't designed for that. Now, a tree is designed to be a tree. And quite frankly, if I could figure out how to afford it, I'd probably have a few trees growing here, you know, in my little garden. But because I can't afford it, my containers just have the things that I can afford the things that I enjoy, the things that God has allowed me to participate with Him in growing up to become the fullness that you see around them. And then when they grow too full, the interesting thing is what some churches don't do anymore, but what I do is I cut them off. Yeah, you know, I cut off pieces of them and I make little plants other places in other containers and I give them away, some of them. You know, people take them home and kill them. <laughs> Because they're not a gardener. <laughs> but no, seriously, sometimes they, you know, enjoy them for a season or for a long time. Sometimes they kill them. <laughs> it happens. You know, and you see that in ministries too. You know, containers that once were big and mighty, you know, may have had offshoots, but they become, those offshoots maybe die off. Maybe not. The point is, the soil that God has made for us, some of it is good soil. You know, and some of it will cause plants to grow up, and that's where you should go and be enjoying. But some soil has weeds in it, you know, and I don't know about you, but, you know, if my roots are getting choked out, you know, like my life is kind of like, you know, getting through some bitterness and some anger and some wrath and malice, and I'm going to a church like that, I, I, I don't think I'm growing, you know. I think I'm kind of like being strangled. <laughs> You know, and the world's kind of getting me, and I'm kind of like being all twisted up. And it's not because I didn't sprout, but it's because my roots are being attacked by weeds. The weeds' roots are sucking up all the water. What little word there was is being bone dry to me because something else is sucking it away before I get it. That's how you kind of evaluate where you should go and what you should do. Because when you are using your church as an expression of your devotion to God, then you want to produce and become blossoms, don't you? Wouldn't you rather be a sweet, savoring fragrance and sight in God's eyes than to be something that whew, stinketh? <laughs> and quite frankly, let's be real. You know if you pooped in your diapers. Because <laughs> you're whining. You're complaining. You got problems. You know, it's like, deal with it. Come on now. You got poop in your diapers. You stink. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> Clean your diapers. You know how. And that's the point of what really dealing with life inside of the body of Christ is like. Being a part of a church. Being involved with people as opposed to ideas. Because a lot of times, Christians like the idea of church as opposed to the individuality of people and their problems. They don't want to deal with someone else. But if you really have in your mind the thought of what Jesus came to do, 
and why he came to do it, which was to serve and not be served, then you know you're going to church in order to help someone change their diapers. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know how mothers do it, but you know what? I don't know a mother yet that doesn't just go ahead and every time they smell their baby with dirty diapers, they just go ahead and change that diaper. Don't matter where they are, what they're doing, it's like, oh, <laughs> change that diaper, man. And they're into it, you know, it's like, they get it done. Men, they do it because they need to. <laughs> You know, but women, oh man, mothers, they're there. They got it covered. So the reality of how we are at church, what we look for in a church, and how we deal with the church that we're at, all boils down to, quite frankly, you. Hey, like I said, I go to church because I already have everything I need at home. I go to church because it's an expression of my devotion to God. Maybe it'll be that way for you. That's why I kind of hope you go to church. <laughs>